Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Today we're gonna to be talking about options chains. You know, a lot of people get a little bit overwhelmed when they look at an options chain and they're like, wow, there's so many numbers on here, so many columns, I really don't know what I need to be looking at. I get a lot of questions all the time about what should I be looking at on my options chain. So today in this video, I'm gonna show you guys what I have on my options chain. We're gonna go through each column and talk about what each column is. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to set up your own options chain uh, based on your type of trading style. If you haven't been here before, my name is Kirk with Tactical Options Trading. We make videos like you see here on a consistent basis. We talk about the stock market, we talk about options. And if you haven't already, I hope you'll consider clicking this button right up here and subscribing to our channel. All right, guys, let's jump right in. All right, guys, we're talking about the options chain. Now, you know, if you've ever opened up an options chain, there are a lot of numbers on that chain. And a lot of people really get overwhelmed when they first open up that options chain. But I promise, guys, it's not that hard. And we're going to jump right in and talk about it here. So what is an options chain? Well, an options chain, simply put, uh, no pun intended there, uh, simply put, is a table listing all the calls, puts, and strike prices for a given option expiration or a given period for a single underlying asset. Uh, the options chain allows quick scanning of open interest, price changes, and activity. Well, that sounds like a lot of convoluted information, right? I promise it's not. Let's go ahead and look at it here. So here's an options chain of Apple or an options table of Apple. Now, if we come right up in here to the 17th of May, 2019 uh, series, and let's go ahead and open that up. You can see that we have an options chain here. So across the top here, you can see that we have uh, quite a number of columns and we're going to go through go ahead and dissect each one of these columns so you know to break it down here we have calls on the left side uh, puts on the right side and this is generally the case for all brokers so calls on the left uh, puts on the right and then across the top uh, we have columns now when you set these columns up uh, it's going to be the same column on the left as the same column on the right and you can see here that we have the mark column and this is how I have my options chain set up. And you can set it up however you want. We'll, we'll go uh, at the end of this video. I'm going to show you guys how to do that in Thinkorswim. So in my uh, options chain, we have mark, uh, volume, we have open interest, delta, probability in the money, and then our position. Now, bid and ask right up here uh, are the same. They stay the same on any options chain that you look at or any column that you add. You're always going to have that bid and the ask in there. So... Also on this options chain, you have the strike prices. Now the strike prices run down the middle of the options chain. And you can see that we have different strike prices all along here, starting from you know uh, highest down to lowest. Uh, some brokers actually let you flip flop this to make the highest at the top and the lowest on the bottom. Uh, in Thinkorswim, you can't do that, but in your broker, uh, you might be able to do that. So let's go ahead and continue on here. So. Every option has a price. We know that, right? And this price can be thought of as uh, several different ways. So buyers offer the price that they're willing to pay, right? So think of it as an auction. So if you're buying something at an auction, you're going to bid. So as a buyer, uh, the, the price that they're willing to pay is the bid price. Now sellers offer or they ask uh, for prices that they're willing to receive to sell the option. And uh, we understand that. I mean, if we're selling something, we're asking uh, the buyer to pay a certain amount. So that's the ask price. And these prices establish what we call a bid ask spread. And you can see our bid and ask right up here at the top. Now the mark price, which is our first column over here on the left, and it's the same on both sides. Uh, the mark price is where the bid and the ask prices actually meet up. So here's the bid. And then, uh, and then there's the ask price, and you can see that uh, there's the market price. So basically, if we look at the bid and the ask for uh, an at-the-money strike, and we can see here the at-the-money strike on Apple, uh, the bid price is 605, and then the ask price is 620. So the price where the sellers and the buyers meet is the mark price or the market price, and that is $6.12, which is basically between the 605 and the 620 and that's where we get that market price or that mark column so already right off the bat there you already can see that there's uh, three columns in this options chain that you already understand so we have the bid the ask and the market price or the mark price 
and it's going to be different for each uh you know for each strike price along the along the uh, strike prices here it's going to be a little bit different uh for each one uh based on the price of that option so this is the same as as well for the put side you can see we were just looking at the call side there but if we come over here to the put side we can see if we're looking at the at the money strike price of 200 here on apple uh, there's the bid price of 595 the ask price of 605 and then the market price of six dollars now it might be uh, easy to point out here in this point in the video uh, you can see that all along the top here mark volume option uh, open interest delta uh, they're all the same they're all the same place in the options chain itself other than the bid and the ask the bid and the ask are always going to be right here next to the uh, strike prices but the mark column is going to be the same the volumes right after it open interest is right after it delta uh, so whatever you have set up on one side is going to be the exact same on the other side just wanted to point that out there so let's talk about the open interest column now so open interest a lot of people kind of get confused to what open interest is versus volume and uh, we're going to talk about the difference here but open interest is the total number of outstanding contracts that have not been settled for example if a buyer and a seller come together and initiate a new position by one contract then open interest will increase by one contract if a buyer and seller both exit uh, a one contract position on a trade then open interest will decrease by one contract so you can see here in this open interest column uh, these different strike prices that we have here have different open interest uh, so you can see that this strike price here has an open interest of 15,909 or 922 contracts. Um, we have 11,114 open, open contracts at this strike price. And you can see all along here, those change and over here on the put side as well. So those are just open contracts. They're, they haven't been closed. They're just, they're positions that people have on. Now, open interest can give us traders an idea of how liquid an option contract is. So as a general rule of thumb, uh, we want at least 100 open interest in the, in the strike prices that we choose. And that's, that's kind of the rule of thumb that I use. So if I have less than 100 open interest in that, uh, in that strike price, I'm not going to trade that strike price. Uh, but keep in mind, though, if you're trading options that are like a couple of months out, two, three months out um, on some, on some uh, ticker symbols, they might not have the open interest there. But you can look at the front month. And see how much open interest is there so as time goes on uh, more and more open interest will eventually fill up in those positions there so but as a general rule uh, i use about 100 open interest in a strike price uh, and nothing less than that so uh, and then and then on top of that uh, we don't want to have we don't want to control more than 10 percent of that open interest so for example uh, if we had uh, 100 in the open interest column of a certain strike price uh, at the most, we would only want to control 10 contracts at that strike price. Now, if we're looking at 1,000 uh, open interest, we don't want to control more than 100 contracts. Uh, that just keeps it where we're not controlling all of that interest, open interest in that strike price. It keeps us out of trouble there. All right, let's take a look at the volume. Now, volume is different than open interest. And uh, volume indicates the number of contracts that have been bought or sold today. So, you know, as the as the market opens up, uh, that column is going to have zeros in it until trades start to happen. So option volume can only increase while open interest can either increase or decrease. So volume is basically just a running total uh, of basically the trades that are being made that day. Now, open interest uh, counts how many open trades are on versus how many have been closed. So volume differs from open interest as open interest displays the number of open contracts while volume keeps a running total on the day of how many contracts were traded, just as I mentioned there. So here's a screenshot of Apple before the market opened. And you can see uh, here that volume is at zero for the day. And that's because the market hasn't opened. And you can see, you know, based on that last screenshot here of Apple, as the market started trading, uh, that volume started to increase. Now, before market open, it was zero because no trades had been had been made that day. All right, let's talk about delta and probability of in the money. Now, I kind of have these um, put here together because it kind of coincide, and I'm going to show you uh, why they kind of coincide together. Uh, but delta measures the impact of a change in the price of the underlying. 
Now, again, on your options chain, you might have the, the four Greeks on there. I really only kind of look at Delta, but you can put on Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, Rho. Uh, you can set up different chains, um, you know, different uh, option. How would you call it? Different. Uh, you could save it as a, a certain template. Um, based on what you look at. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. But Delta uh, measures the impact of change in the price of the underlying. For example, if a strike, uh, strike price we chose had a Delta of 20, then for each dollar move in the underlying asset, our option would increase or decrease in value by 20 cents. So you can see the Delta here of this uh, put option is 20. So anytime that stock moved up or down a dollar, uh, our, our option price would fluctuate by 20 cents in this case. So delta can be thought of as a probability also. So for instance, a 20 delta option has roughly a 20% chance of expiring in the money. So in thinkorswim, you can also add this, uh, this column up here called probability of in the money. And that allows you to, um, you know, you can also add probability out of the money too. Uh, and I like to have that column in there because when you're selling options, you kind of want to know what your probabilities are of that trade expiring worthless or that trade working out in your favor. So let's say, for example, um, we're going with that 22% probability of in the money. Let's say we sold the uh, the 187 and a half. Now, I usually don't sell uh, half strikes, uh, but just for this example, it's at the 20 delta. So I went ahead and used that 187 half. So the 20 delta, we sold that 20 delta. And if you look over here in the probability of in the money, that gives us a 22% probability of that option or that strike price being in the money at expiration. Now, let's say we went up here and we bought the 175 as a protection or a hedge against that stock going against us. Now, by doing that, uh, you know, looking at this options chain here, you can see that if it has a 22% probability of being in the money, it has a 78% probability of being out of the money. So in that case, this would mean that this trade would have about a 78% probability of working out in our favor. Now, if we uh, want to employ this uh, bot position up here, that has a 70, uh, that has a 7% probability of being in the money. So basically, you know, looking at all this here, you can say that, uh, that this trade has a 78% chance of winning with a 7% chance that you'll lose the maximum amount because of that spread there. So you can use these numbers in this options chain to help you uh, better set up your spreads, um, to give you an idea of what the probabilities are of those spreads um, working out in your favor. And in this case, uh, we're talking about a 78% probability of this trade working out in our favor. All right, now position size. Position size, that's pretty uh, self-explanatory there. You can see um, this column just shows the, the size or the position that we have. In this case, uh, XLU, just a one call option that we have here. You can see one contract there. And uh, here's another example of another, uh, you know, an FXE. You can see that we have a iron condor going on here. And uh, you can see that we have bought positions, sold positions. So kind of like having that position there, it just, it lets us know, you know, how many contracts we have on at those certain strike prices. So, you know, not a big deal, but uh, it's it's helpful to have that on there. So guys, let's jump over to a live options chain and we're gonna see how we can change these columns to suit our style of trading. So let me go ahead and pull in my options chain here. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how to set these up. So let me uh, get this little thing out of the way. And we're gonna type in Apple again, just since we've been using Apple here. Now, when you open up Apple, of course, here's our table and we can open up. There's that uh, there's those option contracts again. And you can see there's all my uh, columns that I have along the top and we can save these. And you can see that I have this layout saved as tactical options trading because that is the layout that I use on a on a daily basis. I like, you know, I like just naming it the name of our, you know, our YouTube channel here. So tactical options trading. But uh, Thinkorswim actually has some things that are already auto-populated in the uh, layout here. So you can come in here and you can go uh, last, uh, net change, uh, Theo price, market price, um, volume, open interest, you know, just different different things here. So let me, let me shrink, shrink this down here so we can get to some options that show some meat in them here. 
Uh, so, you know, just some different things. So, Dama, I'm sorry, Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega. Um, so, let's say, for example, we want to change these columns here. We don't want to use the, the custom columns that are already there or the, I'm sorry, the auto-populated columns that are already there. We want to kind of customize it. So, what we do is just come right in here to customize. Now, what this does, now when you first hit customize, it's going to populate what's already what's already on here so you can see we got delta gamma theta and vega if i came in here first and had this up here on my normal uh layout and then came in here and hit customize it populates everything in here that it's already currently on here so let's say for example i didn't want uh volume on there i just double click volume i could take that off if i didn't want open interest in there i could just double click that and take that off now when i hit ok it's going to take those off now if i wanted to save that i can come in here and go save as and then it populates it with the columns that are already in there. But if I wanted to save it as, um, you know, whatever I wanted to save it as, I could just type it in test right here just to show you, for example. So we can come back in here and there it is, test. Now when we click on that, it bring that right back up. So we could toggle between uh, two of them here. Uh, now let's come back in here and let's, let's put us back in and let's say we wanted to uh, customize this further. Let's say we wanted to start out brand new. We could double click all of these on here and just take them all off maybe we wanted to uh, look up intrinsic and extrinsic value we could come right over here into this column and just start typing in intrinsic and there you go we just double click that to add that in and then we can come in here and type in extrinsic and there that is we can double click that add that in hit ok and now we have intrinsic and extrinsic value we could also come back in here and save that and it already populates that with intrinsic extrinsic value we can hit save now anytime we wanted to we can toggle between whatever uh, layouts that we want so there's intrinsic extrinsic value so guys uh, hopefully that's been helpful uh, again you know this is what I use on my options chain I really like just being able to have you know these uh, these things that I've chosen in here uh, I wanted to show you one other thing if you didn't want to come in here and you know kind of customize it doing it this way you want to just a real quick come in here and look at something you could come in here and click the top of that column and it'll give you the option to just change that column right here real quick so you know you could put this as mark you could put it as last you could last size um, whatever you wanted it to uh, option theoreticals you could right here you could just type in extrinsic and there you go boom it puts that right there extrinsic value and since we did it on one side it's going to add it to the other side as well so we can put it right back to where we were before by just clicking our original layout and it'll take it right back guys hopefully this has been helpful in helping you understand what the columns are on an options chain it's really not that hard if you guys just open it up and start looking around a little bit this will all start to make sense and you know you can put whatever you want in these options chain based on your style of trading like for example I like to sell a lot of credit spreads so I like this uh, probability of in the money because it gives me an idea you know based on you know what delta I'm at or what options strike price that I'm selling it gives me an idea where I'm going to be at on that trade uh, you know uh, what the probabilities of that trade are going to be um, if you like to buy options uh, maybe you want to change that column to uh probability of out of the money uh, maybe you you know wanted something else in there it just it's there's a lot of things you can change in this options chain but hopefully this little quick video has been helpful in helping you understand uh, what you can do with that options chain if you guys have any questions or comments please post them in the comment section below we'd love to hear from you i uh, love conversing with you guys through the through youtube here and and just messaging back and forth if i can help you guys in any way let me know if you have any videos ideas uh, let me know as well. Love to help you out with that too. Um, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Thank you to all of our subscribers who have subscribed. Uh, hopefully you're getting some good information out of this. If this video has been helpful, uh, make sure you give it a like. Uh, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.